Well, thank you for joining us for tonight's Backpacks to Briefcases, Build Your Personal Brand. I'm Greg Berry, Assistant Director in the UAB Office of Alumni Affairs. As is the case with any virtual event, please excuse any glitches that you may see. If you experience video or audio issues, click, click the reconnect button at the top of your screen. This will get you back into the webinar right away. Today's session is part of our ongoing Backpacks to Briefcases Evergreen Certificate Program. Through the series, we will have four events each year, two in the spring, two in the fall. These events will focus on financial planning, workplace skills, personal life, and topics like tonight, personal branding. Between each event, we will have opportunities for golden electives, events like lunch and learns or networking and volunteer opportunities. To get an Evergreen certificate and lapel pin, participants must complete all four Evergreen events and two golden electives. You do not have to do all in the same calendar year. We invite you to jump in and join us whenever you can. You can get more information about the program at alumni.uab.edu slash backpacks. That's alumni.uab.edu slash backpacks. At the end of today's lunch and uh, today's backpacks to briefcases, I will highlight other upcoming opportunities for the Evergreen Certificate Program. Tonight, we welcome Sam Miller to our Backpacks to Briefcases series. Sam is a partner at Burton Advertising here in Birmingham. He earned his MBA from the UAB Collat School of Business in 2003. With that, at this time, I would like to turn things over to Sam. Sam, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. And hopefully, we won't have any of those uh, glitches where you drop off. I know we've been having a couple of problems, so hopefully, we have a good uh, connection. And if not, we'll get you right back in the room. We'll give it about five minutes and everybody watching may be hoping that the signal drops out. Uh, so <laughs> thank you for having me. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And we will go ahead and and begin. Greg, you seeing this OK? Yes, I am. OK. All right. Well, um, thank you for having me. Uh, just introduce myself quickly. Um, my name is uh, Sam Miller. I worked at UAB for about 15 years, uh, about half of that time uh, in the university's marketing office, about half of that time overseeing communications for the athletic department. And then I left to uh, join a startup advertising agency. Uh, we just had our 10th birthday as a company uh, a couple months ago. Um, and UAB has been uh, an important part of, of our growth. Uh, we still work with UAB on a number of fronts and, and uh, touch the university in a number of ways. Uh, it certainly is a place where I learned a great deal of what I know. And I teach a couple of marketing classes uh, at UAB. Hopefully a couple of my sports marketing classes are in here. Uh, sports marketing students are in here. Uh, we talked about getting some extra credit, and I will cover that at the end, which you need to do to grab that. But don't worry, we're going to run through this uh, pretty quick. So the topic tonight is developing your personal brand. So the first thing uh, that is important to talk about is what is a brand? Um, then we'll cover what does a brand say about you, and then we'll get into being uh, your own brand. But leading off with the question, what is a brand? Jeff Bezos of Amazon has said, it's what people say about you when you're not in the room. Uh, it's your reputation. It's the things that people think about you when you're not there to sell yourself. Um, it's kind of the uh, an accumulation of all of the things about you that are outbound that people notice. So let's take an example. If we were in person, I'd be asking this question, who knows this brand? And obviously everyone's hand would go up. And this is an interesting one um, because you get a lot of different answers to what this brand means to people. The first hands that go up usually say, um, you know, diabetes or uh, gross food or fast food or convenient food. Um, but generally, the first group of answers uh, are in that category. Um, they think about the product. And then the tables turn a little bit. And there's always somebody that raises their hand and says, wait a minute, 
when I see these arches, I think about road trips with my parents, or I think about my dad coming home uh, with a happy meal. And then the, uh, the tone gets a little bit more interesting. And, you know, people talk about birthday parties and they begin to channel memories that they had as a kid. And it makes you realize that at its best, McDonald's is about more than just burgers and fries. This is a statement from their ad agency. So I want to show you a little bit of McDonald's own uh, brand toolkit. These are some of the ways that McDonald's views themselves in the community. You see the bright colors. Um, you see everything is designed to be friendly and inviting. What you don't see outside of this photograph really are hamburgers. Um, you see social icons, uh, you see families, you see people. Um, and this image is really important because what you see here um, is that it's not about burgers and fries. It's about being a landmark um, and a landmark that everyone recognizes as a place uh, that is convenient to, and friendly and inviting to eat. So from Ad Age, a statement that McDonald's grew up on paid advertising, but now there's so much wider of an array of touch points and everything matters. Everything from signage to packaging to a digital ad can be something that positively or negatively impacts the experience. And that's so important to remember as we get into your own personal brand. So I want to show you another example. We're all familiar with the show Mad Men. This is a, a, a Mad Men era uh, advertisement for Ford. And again, if we were in person, I'd be asking you what you see. But what you see is everything here is designed to showcase the function of the car. You, you see new automatic posture control and mileage makers and ride control and the Fordomatic drive. Everything is about the function of the product itself. I want you to fast forward with me now. This is a TV spot that Ford ran in the Super Bowl. It's many decades later, but I want to show this as a contrast to the way that this company communicates now. And Sam, while this video is playing, I'll just say the audio wasn't working, but I think people will still understand what you're trying to get across. So, yeah, if if you if you were were counting at home, um, it was 47 seconds into that commercial before you saw a vehicle. And it really proves the point. It, it's a wonderful spot. I hate the audio didn't come through, but it, it, it the the title of that spot is stuck. And it shows really that, you know, brand management, advertising, marketing has evolved from showcasing the function of a product to showcasing the emotional value, because ultimately what you're trying to do is build a relationship with the consumer.
And, and that evolution of the spot from that print ad from the 50s to what they're doing now uh, really is informative to kind of your same objectives and the same tools that you have to build your personal brand. I'm sure you're not thinking that, um, you know, you've got a million dollar creative budget to build your personal brand. And while that's true, you do still have some of the same outlets and that's something that we'll cover. So how about these brands? Everyone knows these, um, you know, they're powerful, distinct brands in our society. Uh, they don't just represent the products that they make. They represent to people so much more than that. Um, and take the one in the middle, for example. Um, you know, what's their product? What is it that they make? And all the hands will go up and everyone will say shoes. But, you know, someone else makes the shoes. Another company overseas makes the shoes. And Nike licenses the right to put the swoosh on those shoes. Nike buys them, puts the swoosh on the shoes, and then markets them. And in a lot of ways, um, Nike is really, their product is uh, their own brand image. And the, uh, their strength as a... Um, leading marketing company you know, on the planet. And you can really kind of say the same for, for Apple and Disney as well. So each of these brands creates a reaction. They make you feel something. Um, going back to Nike um, and taking some of the creative that they've done um, that is meant to be deliberately polarizing. Um, you take their uh, commercials that they did with Colin Kaepernick um, a couple years ago. And many, many people think, you know, that's some of the most brilliant marketing that's ever been done. Other people, you know, as you saw when those spots came out, were running out to their backyard to uh, burn their Nike shoes and swear that they'd never buy Nike again. Um, so, again, another example of how, um, you know, their product in many ways is their place in society. So now how about you? What, what reaction... Uh, do you create in people? What do people say about you uh, when you're not in the room? So let's let's take an example, and I'll ask you. You know, what do what are you studying to be? I know we've got some. Uh, I know we've got some marketing students in the room. You know, anybody studying accounting, engineering, medicine, science? Art, all really big uh, areas of study at UAB. I'm sure we've got some from all of those fields uh, here with us today. And I know people who have degrees from UAB that are all of these things and a and hundred more. Um, we could list for days all of the professions um, that come out of UAB with, with degrees. And so just like I asked you what Nike's product is or what McDonald's product is, I would say, look at this list and look at yourself and what it is that you're studying and ask, what's the product? You know, unless uh, you're literally studying to make uh, conveyor belts and, and, and products that will be built on them. The product is people. The product is you. You are the product, your talent, your intelligence, your motivation, your experience, all of those things combine uh, to be the product of you. And one of the things that I think, um, you know, as our world has evolved a little bit in the digital age that we kind of fail to teach in business classes is, you know, so many people think, I'm coming to school, I'm going to enroll in business classes, I'm going to get a degree, maybe I'll get an MBA, and then I'm going to start my own business. And you think about your own business in terms of, well, I got to make something, I got to have a product, or I got to have an idea. But the point is that you're already your own business. And think about that, because this is really important to this entire session. You are all already 
your own business, everyone on this call. It doesn't matter who you work for or where you go to work or where your office is. You are in control of your own brand. So let's say you work for, I won't pick a local example, but let's, let's say you work for a big box company that's in Birmingham. Well, you can pick up and leave your job tomorrow and go get a new one if you want to. You know, your salary that you command is the dollar worth of your business right now. But you're in control. You're the one, you're the CEO of your own business. You're the chief marketing officer too. You're in control of how much this business makes and how profitable it is, how visible it is, and what its growth potential is. And the important thing for tonight is that your business already has its own brand. So what do the best brands do? Three things that we'll talk about. They have visibility, they know their audience, and they make you feel something. So let's look at this list. We already talked about Nike. Um, look at the two kind of in the middle, Pepsi or Coke. You know, you see those logos, everybody has a preference. You know, a brand is winning um, when it gets to the point that, uh, like Coke is, that it almost becomes a slang adverb um, in people's dialect. So people have an instant reaction to seeing a lot of these logos. Let's talk about the three on the right. If you live in this state, those three logos mean something to you. If you go to this school, that dragon means something to you. If you are an alumni, it means something to you if you went to the other two schools as well. They're so big, they're so visible in this state, and they make you feel something. So let's talk about your visibility, and let's start here. You got a lot more than you think, and we're going to go through it here a bit. So I graduated, um, I got my undergraduate degree from the University of Alabama in 1997. Uh, you guys are students in 2021 or recent graduates, or you, know, you live in this modern world. <laughs> when I graduated, um, this was what anybody knew about me, what I could stuff on a sheet of paper. That was it. Um, when I was a student, my senior year, I got a special award at the University of Alabama. I was named the student of the year my senior year. And I thought, this I have won a lottery ticket. I will have every job offer in the world that I want because of how hard I've worked and um, you know, because of this recognition. Well, you know what? <laughs> that recognition is a bullet point in a document that most people were never going to read in the first place. So let's look at things now. If I were to have that recognition, there'd be photos on it uh, on Instagram. I'd be tweeting about it. It'd be, you know, covered in Facebook. It would be on my LinkedIn profile. Look at all the ways that companies can find information about you. Now, in 1997, someone had to be interested enough in me to go down this list and read. Well, if I pull up your Instagram, I don't really have to read anything. I can divine information about you just from scrolling through your photographs. And that's really, really important to think about. So in our company, we hire people all the time. We hire new graduates from schools all across the state. And so we're constantly getting resumes sent to us to review. People want internships, people want jobs. That's great. And I always say, I can learn so much more about you from this collection of icons on the right side of the screen than I can from a resume. A resume is important. It's an icebreaker. Uh, it's an still an important traditional part of the process. But anyone who's on this call, if we were in person and, and I could go search you out in five minutes, I could create a picture of you, your habits, your likes, uh, your interests, 
whether you're passionate about what it is that you want to come work with me to do, um, I can find that out in minutes. And it paints so much more of a three-dimensional picture than this black and white sheet of paper here on the left. So visibility. This is a fascinating number, and it's really important. The average employee has 10 times the social media following of the company that they work for. Let that sink in. That is important for me to know as a company, and it's important for you to know as someone who wants to work for a company. So again, that visibility makes you accessible to anyone in the world. If we learned anything uh, over the last 12 to 15 months, it is that we are now in a completely global economy. Um, we have picked up work projects from places we never would have gone before because everybody's looking at things in a different way. And, you know, the, the uh, necessity of living in a community where you work is not nearly as strong as it was 12 months ago. So that visibility and access is really important. So let's take a look at an example of this. So we all know who this is, right? Our, I hope so. I teach sports, work in sports, so so I know this guy. I know him well. So if you were to guess how many people watch him play basketball when he's on national TV, you know, the the guesses would be all over the place. But I want to give you an example of a game that the Lakers played uh, in March on TNT against the Pelicans. They had 920,000 viewers across the country. It's a lot of people. That is a lot of people. That's a huge number of people. But look at this post from his Instagram account. This is just one that I grabbed at random. It's not even one of the most liked or viewed. So you know this guy as the best basketball player on the planet. But here is a picture of him just walking into an arena and it's got 50% more interaction and engagement than the game that you know him for. And so that speaks to the complexity of your brand and the opportunity that you've got uh, to showcase multiple things. Now let's look at another example. This is a kid. He's maybe your age. Um, I saw this a while back. Um, I'm assuming the audio is not working here either. Um, but this young fella uh, made it to uh, Instagram walking out of the uh, either jail or the hospital um, after a bender where he had a blood alcohol content of 0.35. And look down at the bottom there. Remember, 920,000 people watch the Los Angeles Lakers on national television. And look how many people have viewed this video of a kid who is a couple years away from wanting a job. 1.2 million. 900,000, 920,000 people watch LeBron James play basketball. 1.2 million have watched this kid come out of a out of a hospital or jail or, or, or wherever. And that's so, you know, this is not a good positive example to show, but it's important to show uh, the potential reach that can, can happen good or bad and why it's so important to manage your brand and what's out there. So the next thing is knowing your audience. And I want to share a, a personal example here. So this is my daughter, Macy, when she was uh, two years old, just about to be three. And we went to Disney World. She met Snow White and absolutely just fell in love with everything Disney. And I have never known a person more committed to what they want to do in life than Macy. This moment, this trip just inspired her that Above anything else, all she wanted to do was work for Disney as an animator and make Disney or Pixar movies. 
So this is her when she graduated from high school two years ago. You see she had lovely uh, brown hair at her graduation. So Macy is an artist and a good one. She's accomplished and has, it's a passion. Everything you see about Macy references back to her art. But the day after graduation, she came home and she had pink hair. Now, as a dad who still looks at her like the little three-year-old in uh, Snow White's arms, I did not love the pink hair. I didn't love it. But I had to step back and think about what it is that Macy wants to do with her life. And this is her. You know, this is her artwork. This is what she does. She's an art student. She's going to college to study art. She's a junior. She has moved to uh, Laguna Beach, California to get closer to Disney and, and Pixar. This is what she wants to do with her life. This is what she wants to create. And these are the people that she wants to work for. So does the pink hair matter? I don't think so. These guys may throw her out of their office if she doesn't have pink hair. And proof to that point, here she is from Birmingham, Alabama, already accomplishing her goals. Uh, and in her interview, uh, to get her job, her first uh, job with Disney, they told her that they immediately went and looked at her art on Instagram. Uh, because that was more important to them than, than a portfolio, a traditional portfolio. So the next thing is to make people feel something. And this is important too. So these stats are crazy to me. So I'm a, a little older than, than Gen X, I think. So the average person my age will have four to six jobs over their lifetime. My parents, it was like, my grandparents, that was one job. My parents, that was maybe one to two or three. The average millennial group will have 10 to 15 jobs in their career. So if you think that you're going to graduate, maybe get your first job at, we'll say, um, 25 is a round number and work till you're 65, that's 10 to 15 jobs over 40 years. Think about how often that means you're hopping jobs how often you're transitioning or doing something different with your own personal business. That just goes again to prove your brand is your resume. It's what attracts people to you. It's what helps you shift and make that change when you want to. And it is always on. It's never off. So make them feel something by showing your passion building relationships with other strong brands and giving people something that they want more of. You go back to you know, my daughter's Instagram page. It's all art. So when the folks at Disney went to go see what is it that we know about this person, the first thing that they saw was her passion, that you know she's regularly creating. This is what she does in her free time. She is a creator. She's a maker. Um, she, I think, has been smart about building relationships with other strong brands. When I was coming up, I think we would say that was maybe a lack of humility. But, you know, it's so smart when you have the opportunity to continuously associate yourself with a brand like Disney or Pixar, that you do it and that you continue to strengthen that relationship in the way that people outwardly see it. She may not go to work for Disney right when she graduates college. She may go to work for an ad agency or a creative company or a graphic design firm. But when they go to look and see what her brand is, they will immediately associate her with Disney. And then lastly is to give people something that they want more of. And I think that goes back to, to something I'll say cover again later, but Having access isn't the same as having something to say. So having a Twitter account or an Instagram isn't the same as what you create and put out. Just having it isn't enough. So showing your passion, creating, 
sharing, starting over, reinventing. Mostly, I think it's about loving what you do. Um, again, you know, we interview people all the time. And the first thing that is obvious to me is the people who are passionate about creating, the ones who wake up, because that's, that's what we do in our business, the ones who wake up wanting to make something new that day, and they go to sleep scribbling down ideas on a notepad. They're never away from the work because it's what they're driven to do. And that comes across in the, the things that you share on social media. The other things that come across are your attitude. You know, are you a positive person? Are you a builder? Are you someone that compliments others? Or are you someone that just talks about yourself? Um, if you're on Twitter, you know it can be a deeply negative place sometimes. And, and it's easy to kind of get sucked into that. But those things stay there. They create uh, a wake behind you know, your brand boat, so to speak, that is visible to the people that come looking for you. So we said your, your, your brand is always on. Um, we'll go back to giving people something that they want more of. A medium doesn't equal a message. Um, you know, just having that account isn't the same as using it to do something. Um, and, and some ideas here are, you know, you're an expert in something. And we'll cover this a little bit later. But I think a lot of college students kind of take for granted uh, sometimes how unique it is that you are in college at this level and have made it this far. That's not something everybody's able to do. You take classes where you're learning and by learning you're becoming an expert and use your platforms uh, to create content that shows your expertise. Um, writing a blog, getting your name on a byline, uh, getting your name and you know, if you're a video producer, getting your name in the credits of a big piece, um, getting your name on the list of contributors to an award. Uh, those things are important and they help you in your next step. So you're already your own business. We established that. So what is your brand? You are a brand and your brand is just authentically you because who you are comes out in that big list of social media that we covered earlier. And you're in charge. Again, you are your own business and you're in charge of it. You're the CEO, you're the CMO, and it's your choice as to how you use that opportunity. Um, you know, you can be the one coming out of the hospital to get 1.6 million views or whatever it was, uh, or you can be using your brand to build for what you want. But it's important that you understand you're in charge of it, and there's no single one path or no, no right path. And so I want to kind of close here uh, with this. You know, everyone on this call, if you're associated with UAB, we all have one brand attribute that binds us. And I think this is really important. We all have a common bond in our brands. And it's UAB. And let's take a step back and think about what that means. I said earlier, you know, it's hard to appreciate until a little bit later down the road the significance of what it means to graduate from college. So there are 4,298 colleges in America, and you are a graduate or soon will be a graduate of a state institution. Now think about that, there are 50 states. Each one has a state institution, a state system. Um, in the state of Alabama, there are three state institutions. Those are the primary state investment institutions. The university, a state institution means it's the university of, insert state name. So we're the University of Alabama at Birmingham. That's a big deal. That means of those 4,298 colleges, you are at an elite state institution. UAB is one of 131 Carnegie One research institutions. I won't go into all the details of what that means, but it's a 
big, big, big designation nationally. So you are attending and getting a degree from one of the, again, remember where we started, 4,298. You are at one of 131 institutions that have received this designation for their cumulative interest in research. It's a big deal. Now, only one of those universities is younger than UAB. So you're beginning to see the picture I'm painting here. UAB is a top 12 young university in the world, two years in a row, and named the top young university in the United States. So step back five slides. There are 4,298 colleges in the United States. And think about the one that you have a degree from or the one that you're about to earn a degree from. And what does that say about you? Again, we said partner with strong brands. I just showed you how strong the brand of UAB is. When you partner with it, when you share your pride in UAB, when you post pictures with the dragon on your hat or in your cap and gown, when you show your pride on the accomplishments that you've made to graduate from this institution, you are partnering with a brand that is known internationally for its youth, for its diversity, for its entrepreneurship and innovation. Now, as a young person entering the work, workforce, that's a pretty strong statement. That's a pretty strong statement. That's a pretty great brand. So when you proudly list UAB on your resume, when you share your story, you're already branding yourself along with those ideals. So when somebody sees that you're a proud graduate of UAB, they associate you with the brand image of, of the university and every, every pride point that the university has. So that's it for my presentation. And, and I guess, you know, my last question that I'll leave you with is, is what are you doing today to be growing the business of you? And again, no matter what your interests are, uh, I think the big takeaway from, um, you know, the idea of personal branding is that you always have been and always will be your own business. And the product is you and how you market it. Um, what you choose to do with it uh, is your decision alone, and it's a really important one. Sam, fantastic information as always. Thank you so much for, you for the insight into building the personal brand. If anybody has a question, toss them in the chat box. We will get to them. Um, I'll kick things off, and this is only because I've, I've heard the story about your daughter a couple of different times. You said that you had to take a step back. How long was that step back before you went, you know what, she's on the right path and, and she's doing something right? It took me a couple of days. When I first saw it, my face uh, may have gone as pink as her hair. I'll put it that way. It was a surprise to me. Um, but, you know, it, it pretty quickly, um, you know, she's she's an artist. She's incredibly talented and it's what she's always wanted to do. And in her world, you know, your brand is most important in your world. Um, and in her world, having pink or blue or green, it, it's, per it's, it's perfectly normal. It just was a little bit of a shock to me as her dad. I've never seen anyone else with pink or blue or green hair and thought anything about it. It was just as her dad uh, that I had that reaction. And, and taking a step back, I mean, I, I think you know, her ability to her express her individuality fits right in line with what she wants to do with the rest of her life. A lot of it comes down to being deliberate with your posts. She had obviously an end result in mind. She didn't know if she was going to get it at the time. I mean, she didn't know. I mean, how could she know that Disney's going to reach out and, and, you know, talk to her? Um, but it's all about having just the very intentional posts, the, the intentional conversations through social media and everything else, basically, isn't it? Well, it is. And, and I should say this, too. I mean, it, it's it's my my daughter, so I'm a little biased. But I learned from her 
about this because when she was 10 years old, she was posting on Instagram and had, you know, a thousand followers interested in her artwork. And she was so deliberate about what was good enough to make it to her official channel. And, you know, I, you know, really learned from watching her because she was growing up and, and evolving and developing her, her skills in that world, which is, you know, a little foreign to us old and, and bald people. <laughs> I, I totally agree right, now with the right bald hairs. thing, but being foreign, Hey, I'm, I'm old just like you. So I'm in the same boat. Um, would not being active on social media be a hindrance for the modern employee? Well, so social media is a relative thing. And again, uh, I think the world that you want to work in, the world where you want to run your own business, that's the that's a very important thing. So, um, you know, social media goes a lot of different directions. I mean, if you're an artist, do you have to be on Instagram? No. Uh, but I do think it's important that you find ways to showcase your abilities. If you're a video producer, um, finding ways to continually kind of archive and share the work that you've done is important. That doesn't necessarily have to be on social media as long as it is available and shareable and, you know, it, an archive that you can point people to, to get a, to get a picture of your abilities. Now that does not you know, if you just were to say, keep everything on a website, that doesn't get into the person of who you are um, in a way that uh, you can kind of divine from some, you know, from the things that somebody shares on social media. But again, it, you know, if you want to be a lawyer, if you want to be a researcher, if you want to be, if you endeavor to be an oncologist, um, you know, it's all about, you know, what is relevant in that world and making sure that you're active in that space. And, and that kind of goes in, kind of goes into this question. Does making your social media private hurt your chances of landing a job? It probably depends on what the job is sure. and what you're trying to get out there. Sure. Um, you know, again, in, in our, my business is completely relational. Um, and so, you know, someone's personality is incredibly important to whether they can function as a part of the team, uh, you know, whether they can, you know, contribute through talent uh, and ability and experience is important, but it's maybe not as important as kind of attitude and, and passion for uh, creating and, and what they do. And so, you know, I would really want somebody with a social profile. Now I say that and I don't have Facebook anymore. So, um, you know, but again, I'm old and I'm, I don't have anybody looking at me for jobs. So um, again, I think it just kind of goes back to the, the world that you're in. If you're, if you are preparing for match day, I think it's kind of, you know, when you're your own business, something that's really important. Um, you know, every advertising campaign that we ever put together, any consulting I ever do for a business, including our own, starts with what are our weaknesses and addressing those, but mostly being honest and aware of them and being open to the things that you can do better, uh, open to the areas where someone else can compete with you um, is really important. And that goes back to understanding uh, your strengths as well as your weaknesses, because they're all a part of, of that brand and putting things out that speak to your strengths is important. My kids have social media, your daughter, she got on social media at a younger age. A lot of people will post things that aren't pertinent as you get older. Is there a best practice to, you know, change things or get rid of things as you mature when you're out in the job market and you're wanting to brand yourself? Great question. So I think, um, you know, if you've, if you've followed along with Instagram, uh, and I'll take kind of the art community uh, as an example or, or the advertising community, 
you know, the way that companies and individuals have used that platform has really changed over about five years. So, um, you know, it's a visual medium. It was des always designed to be. And so it tends to bring in artistic people, visual people. Um, and, you know, when it first started, you know, it wasn't that different from Facebook. You would get content dropped in there of, you know, you always heard the jokes about, I don't need an app to see what somebody had for lunch. You would get food pictures and all this content that would just stack up and people would have thousands of posts. Um, and something that has happened recently or, or over the last few years is that you see people much more uh, aware of curating that content that's left behind. And, and in a way, that's kind of the um, kind of the value of the invention of the disappearing stories. The, you know, all these social media channels have kind of captured uh, the Snapchat idea of something that's available for 24 hours and then off goes into the ether. But your curated posts are something different. And people have, I think, you know, really kind of addressed and understood the difference. Um, I'm interested in photography and, and video creation. So I follow a lot of artists who may, you know, I know how busy they are. I know how much they're putting out because they're sharing it in their stories. But what you see in their curated content is only the best of the best of the best of their work or only uh, the best work associated with the biggest brands that they've worked with. The things that create the, the brand that they want for themselves. Would you say that all social media are equal in branding? This person uses LinkedIn very professionally, but their Facebook is private and very meme related and they don't want to have that negatively impact their image. Well, again, I mean, I think it depends on, on the world you're living in. I mean, if that person wants to be a stand-up comedian, um, you know, m meme away. Um, but if you want to be a lawyer or if you may have some political views, uh, you know, as you're looking for open doors, I think one thing is that's important is to be aware of the things. You don't want to invite trouble, right? You don't want to give people easy opportunities to close doors. We are in a crazy hyper-political time right now where people's views and opinions can be really polarizing. So you may have a dream job out there, but you know that meme, if it's political, may shut that door on you before you ever get the chance to, to push it open, no matter how qualified for that job you might be. And so, you know, again, I do think it's important to be authentic to who you are, but again, understanding the world, uh, you know, in which you're trying to, to, to navigate. And, you know, I would think not everything's for public consumption. And this will be the last question unless we get more in the chat box. And this one might be a little, little heavy and, and not necessarily easy to answer, but what can we do as new graduates to make ourselves more marketable to higher income jobs as opposed to entry level? Great question, uh, tough question. And um, it's a tough question. I mean, I've got a daughter that'll be graduating in you know a year and a half and living in Los Angeles and um, you know her apartment rent is three times what my mortgage costs. Um, and, you know, I think that there is an expectation of uh, being prepared to earn right away. And I would go back to a lot of what we've talked about, which is experience. You know, I, I mentioned a blog or I mentioned getting, um, getting your name in a credit, uh, having your name on a byline. And, and as, this is one of the really amazing and unique. And so, um, you know, I would go back to that experience of developing professionally. You know, one of the things I didn't do in my personal experience was when I walked into companies with my um, 
you know, little sheet of paper from Kinko's, um, you know, I, there was no incentive to hire me. Nobody cared about my award. I mean, that's, that's real world stuff. I was walking into companies with a sheet of paper and didn't understand how to articulate. Here's how I'm going to help your company. Here's how I'm going to help your business. Here's how you're going to pay me and I'm going to earn you more than you pay me. And that's what every business wants. So if you're looking to get a higher end job, you know, experience has value. Um, accomplishments and, and things that you have been able to do that speak to your um, work ethic attitude that has value. But if you want a high paying job, you know, here's, here's an equation that nobody can argue with. If you want to make $60,000 in your first job when you graduate and you can walk in to a job interview and say, here's how I'm going to make you $60,001 by hiring me. Um, you know, that's brand building. I would say Sam. that's a strategy for how to do it. Very insightful. I always love listening to you and, and sharing how personal brand can set you apart. Any last words as we, we wind yeah. down? Yes. Uh, for the students in my sports marketing class, if you're still on, you will see a lot of brands behind my head. I may have the uh, most cluttered backdrop. Um, to get the extra credit, here's all you got to do. You got 15 minutes. So by... 810, email me at samiller at uab.edu and just tell me any of the one brands that's on the shelves behind me. Awesome. Love extra credit. <laughs> Sam, thank you so much for uh, being here tonight and uh, taking time out of your evening to be with us. Thank you. For everybody who attended tonight, we will have a recording of the webinar available on our website starting tomorrow morning. If you're looking for something to do, join us April 23rd through April 26th for our virtual scholarship run presented by Viva Health. We have a 5K, 10K, and non-running option, so basically something for everybody. Registration is only 35 bucks, and you can register at alumni.uab.edu slash run. Be sure to check out other upcoming opportunities in our Evergreen Certificate Program. On April 20th, we'll be hosting a virtual lunch and learn with resume building. Through this event, we'll take a look at ways to ensure your resume is articulating your impact and you are getting the jobs you want. You can use some of this branding stuff to go along with that. Then on April 29th, join us for another lunch and learn interview skills, where we will find out how we can master the art of the interview. Give more information or register at alumni.uab.edu slash events or alumni.uab.edu slash backpacks. If you're looking for a podcast, listen to the UAB Green and Told podcast throughout your day or on your way to and from work. Our podcast features members of the UAB community and is released every other week. You can find it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts or visit alumni.uab.edu slash green and told. You can also stay on top of everything alumni on social media. Just search UAB alumni on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. On LinkedIn, search UAB alumni career community. You need to get a hold of us, email alumni at uab.edu. So once again, thank you so much for joining us tonight for the discussion with Sam Miller. Sam, thanks so much for being here. Have a great evening, and as always, go Blazers.